Now it's time to mount the generator. The next step is to get the electrical power installed in the generator. First step is to cut, drill a hole in the cabinet, determine the location. The next step is to get your electrical power and fish it into the, into the cabinet. Once the power is into the cabinet, then it's just a matter of getting your three wires connected to the power strip. Now it's time to terminate your power uh, connections. And if you look, we've got a display on, on the inside of the cabinet that defines where the connections are. We've got the black wire, which is going to go to L1. We've got the white wire going to the neutral. And then we've got the green wire going to go to ground. Okay, now that we've turned our circuit breaker on, let's check and make sure that our power connection is correct. Turn it on, things are working, great, now we shut it back off. Now it's time to connect to the sprinkler system. So we bring in our pipe, we've got a half inch connection, it threads right in here. We now have our half inch supply line going to our sprinkler systems. Now to start, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the controller for the cut in and cut out pressures. Typically the cut out pressure is set and you shouldn't have to change it. The only thing we need to change is the cut in pressure and that is based on the air maintenance device setting. Our air maintenance device is going to be set at 30 psi so we want to take and set up our controller for 25 PSI. What we'll do is we'll turn it on, we're going to push the lower right hand button and hold it until the display set comes up. First thing's coming up is SP, which is your cutout. We're going to move to the RP and we're going to adjust it. Once we see, once we get to it, we're going to press the center button, it's going to start flashing. And then we're going to raise and lower that number to where we need it to be. We want it to be at 25 PSI. Why does this 3 to 5 pressure range matter so much? The 3 to 5 pressure range is how we pressure cycle the system. And if we get, get that pressure range too close, what will happen is it'll be such a short period that of filling the system or filling the supply line that the generator will kick on and it'll kick right back off again. Kick on, kick back off. And short cycling will damage the equipment. So we don't want that. We want to keep that range at least 3 to 5 pounds. What you're going to do is you're going to check for 98% purity by using your handheld gas analyzer and plugging into the quick disconnect with a combination of 98% here and then check your production rate. The production rate should be in alignment. Uh, we do send a copy of the test report when it was shipped so you can use that as your reference on how to, uh, what, the, what the rates are on the system. Along with, there's commissioning information in the manual and at next to it is the QR code and that QR code gets you to a YouTube video on how to do this. Okay, now it's time to install a riser, or vent which is installed on the riser. First thing you get installation instructions along with the QR code. There's also a sticker to install on the riser. The vent itself is fully assembled, however, we do have a union on the vent which makes it easy to install and great for servicing. Once the Teflon is taped is on, we then will thread this portion of the vent into the mechanical tee which has already been installed. Okay, thank you. Now the vent. Because 
of the fact that we're pressure cycling the system, we can install the vent anywhere we want. And the most logical place to install it is on the riser, where it's easy accessible, it's out of the customer's space, and it's easy to maintain. The vent is assembly includes the ball valve, it's got a Y strainer, a float, an inline filter, a regulator, a sampling port, and then the orifice. The orifice is sized based on the size of the system so we can meet the 14 day inerting period within the 14 days. Now, what we need to do on this is we need to adjust the regulator. So, in order to adjust that, what we're going to do is we're going to open the ball valve and close the ball valve and watch the gauge decrease down to the low air alarm point. If it doesn't, what you need to do is pull down on a cap and turn it either to the left or to the right to raise or lower it depending on what you need. Once you get it set, close it, check it one more time, open close. Once that's done, what you, to start the inerting process, you're going to open this ball valve and come back 14 days later and close the ball valve. At this point, we have completed the commissioning of the nitrogen generator and the vents.